So we're going to be finishing up this line today. Um, we started it last stream, and so we're going to finish this up and probably maybe move into some digital artwork when we're done. So... So yeah, I think I'm just going to jump right into it. So this is actually almost done. I just need to um, let me see. Hang on, really quick. Okay, I'm just gonna. Um, basically fix a couple things here that I noticed that were wrong. Oop! Oh my god. Oh my god, you guys. I usually do that like 10 times while painting. It just, my brush just flies out. It's crazy. Okay. Um... So yeah, while I was away, I noticed some things like the proportions that were wrong. Okay, hang on. I'm sorry, I just need to fix something. Okay, there we go. Okay, so yeah, so I noticed a couple um, things that were wrong and then I just wanted to, um, so just fix that and then just work on my values a little bit, brightening up um, or darkening, I should say, some of the darks and then I'll go in with the light. So this is actually almost done and then we get to the fun part which is splashing the color all around so I want to I don't want to fuss with this too much I think I have um, fussed too much already actually I didn't really I don't know I mean I wanted it detailed but I think I just went a little bit overboard I guess so I just darken a few things So how's everybody doing? Can you guys tell me how the sound is? Because I'm so new at this. This is like so scary, the technical side of things. And I just want to make sure everything is like working properly.
and there's still so much I need to learn with it and I don't even know like how to check like the sound and stuff. This is still kind of weird to me, the top of his head here. I don't know why. And I've lost a little bit of detail in some spots, but I'm just going to go over with my, um, my white gouache and, and just add some of that back in. So yeah, so I'm gonna just probably, you know, finish his teeth and work on his um, mouth just a little bit more, and then I think we'll go in with the with the color. Wow, that is super bright. These paints are really pigmented. They're not expensive or anything, but they're um, they're the best ones that I've used. So far, I'm not a watercolor artist. I just, um, I mean, I, I like to do watercolors and stuff, but I'm not technically a watercolor artist. I'm still kind of learning um, how to use them and stuff, so. So I don't really have anything um, to compare them to This is actually only probably my fifth um, watercolor that, I mean, I've done watercolor before, but um, in this style and where I kind of feel like I have somewhat of a hang of it, um, then yeah, this is like my fifth one. I'm not sure about those teeth. I'm gonna have to fix that. I might need to go in with some white gouache and fix that up right there. Ruthie, I'm choky. Cause originally I wasn't gonna go with the color, um, like color on his in his on his tongue, but um, I don't know, it just happened like that. I was trying to keep it with sepia, like a sepia um, tone for just. For the whole subject and then um, splash the color on top but I went ahead and added that color in there
Okay, so I'm gonna use my gouache and just go over his teeth a little bit up here because they kind of got lost. Then I could just glaze some yellow over it to like bring it back. And then I might go back into this after, but um, I'm probably gonna leave it like that for now and just move on and then I can finish that up after. What do I do with my cat? Hmm. So I think I'm gonna leave it at that because I don't wanna fuss over it too much. Um, and then, I'm just going to, yeah, jump into the background, I think. Hi, Jay Benthal. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to go for it. I didn't know um, going into this, I wasn't, I didn't have like a clear vision for this one. Um, like I did for these. I wanted it to be something like this with like just sepia the um you know the cat and then you know go around with the color which I'm thinking I'm gonna do like um I'm thinking like doing reds and yellows and um, oranges making it kind of like fiery or something whereas with this one I went with rainbow so we'll see so I'm gonna move these and yeah, so we're just gonna see how it's gonna go. So I'm gonna wet the background first and I kind of want it to like bleed into him. And this is like the real fun part right here for me. I like all kinds of watercolor. I like the ones that are, um, that are really loose and just bleed into each other. But I also like the ones that like look so realistic that you can't tell that they're watercolor. So I'm kind of trying to do like a mixture of both of those styles here. So yeah, so we're just randomly put some water down. And then I'm just gonna splash some color on. Let's see, and I haven't swatched these, so I don't really know what they look like, but I guess I could do it right there. These are so bright and pigmented. And then I'm just gonna drop the color. This is also kind of scary for me because it's like, oh my God, I don't wanna mess it up. Like what if it, this color looks bad? Well, I guess I could take it up with a paper towel, but it's kind of scary because it's like you do all that work on the detail of that and then to throw color it's like oh, I hope I don't mess it up but we'll see we'll see how it goes and I don't even know if this color comp combination is going to be good I mean we'll just it's all about experimenting I'm still learning with this um, watercolor so if it if it uh, if it messes up, I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be too hard on myself about it. It's you know it is what it is. I also like to get some splatters in there. Probably do that at the end. So. I want it to, yeah, it kind of looks like fiery. That's kind of, kind of what I was going for. All right, so then we'll just add a little bit of color all around. And 
we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Whoops. So yeah, if you're new here, which you probably are because this is only my second stream. Um, I mostly do acrylics and um, pastel and digital drawing and painting. So um, those are like my three main mediums. So you'll see a lot of that on my channel. I like to do a lot of different things. I like to um, just experiment with different art supplies. I like using all different um, different kind of art supplies. So I have I use watercolors. I do a little bit of markers and stuff like that. I just like to dabble in all that type of stuff. So you'll see a lot of different th things. just gonna get actually I'm gonna switch my brush to a round brush to this big round brush and I'm just gonna um, get a lot of paint and a lot of water and just kind of um, you know splatter some to get some like big splatters going but let's see there we go and I'll even um, wait for this to dry a little bit too and then I might go back over and splatter some more just because um, then it won't bleed in as much it's more like defined So it's not bad, kind of what I had in my mind. I think I just want to add some more red right here. And then I'm going to just take some of this up right here because I feel like it covered it too much. And you can even like, you know, make it drip a little bit. Um, but for this one, I don't think I want drips. So yeah, I'll just wait for this. To dry. Probably go in a little bit more with the teeth again. Actually, I haven't used this white on here. I want to see how opaque it is because all the other colors seem to be really opaque. So let's see. I'm just curious. It's not bad. But I think I still like my gouache better, so... 
So that will be the last thing. Once this dries completely around, then I can do um, his whiskers, and that's that's really what adds adds to his personality, makes it more real. Now West, hi. Um, no, it's not a plate. This is actually a um, it's a canvas or not a canvas. It's a it's a watercolor paper. It's by um, I think it's called Uli. So it's basically like a block. Um, it's a watercolor block, but it's round. So yeah, I think it's by Uli. It's not a professional brand. I think it's more like a kids brand. But I got it um, to. Um, just try because it was round is mainly why I wanted it but it's actually a really good paper it's 300 pound and um, and I like it it's really good so yeah it's just a watercolor block of paper John, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Have you ever drank your paint water by accident? <laughs> um, almost, yeah. I haven't actually done it, but almost. I do that, yeah, all the time. I'll go to, like, you know, pick it up. Um, yeah, that's not fun. <laughs> At first, I thought you were drawing on a big taco. <laughs> you a Leo? I'm actually a Gemini. <laughs> I'm a Gemini, but I wanted to do um, this uh, guy as a part of my my watercolor series here. So Mr. Tiger was first, and then I did this leopard. So. <laughs> I have once that day I learned that water-based acrylics don't taste nice. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't imagine that they do. <laughs> I've come really close though before. Actually, I have my coffee here next to me and I noticed my uh, paint is splattering in there. So that's not gonna, it's not gonna be a nice taste, but. It's kind of flinging all over. The realism is amazing, though. Do you work with colors a lot? I mean, it's really detailed work. Um, yeah, I, um, I'm i not a watercolor artist, um, so this is actually only, like, my fifth, like, real watercolor piece that I'm trying at. Um, but I do do realism. I do... Um, I, I'm mostly working acrylics and stuff, so actually, so I'm so new, I don't have my um, chat bot set up, so, but let me type really quick in here, and I can um, give you guys my Instagram, and you can look up my work, so yeah, I, I do realistic um, acrylics and digital and pastel, that's the three main mediums that I work in, so let me, sorry, let me type this in really quick. <clears throat> so it's just Shauna Jensen Fine Art. That's pretty much how you can um, find me on anything. You can look look me up on um, on Facebook, Instagram. My website is just Shauna Jensen Fine Art .com. I have an Etsy shop that I sell prints and originals at. Um, yeah, stuff like that. 
was painting with mostly dark colors and was next to my black tea ever since it's he left out the work paint water, right? <laughs> yep. Oh my gosh. So I know this is still pretty wet, but um, I feel like I lost a little bit too much over here. So I'm just going to add in some brown. Actually, I'm going to switch my brush. And I'm just going to add in some of that brown. Also, um, watercolors, I'm just very impatient with. So that's why I don't do them a lot either, because I'm just very impatient. I don't like to let things dry when I should. Like right now, I should probably let this dry, but I don't want to, so. Yeah, so this is something that I'm still um, very new at with watercolors. I'm still learning and experimenting. So they're kind of like big keychain. <laughs> Beautiful work, by the way. Thank you. So that's a little bit better, I think. Kind of brought them back in. Actually, I'm going to add some of that over here, too. Because, like, yeah. That'll be good. Then it'll look like he has a mane back here. It's subtle, but it's there, so. Let's see. I'll go back to surfing around Twitch. It was really nice dropping by. Have a nice day and happy new year. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. Happy new year. Come back again. <laughs> I haven't figured out my schedule just yet because I just started. This is my second one, but um, definitely want to do, try to do three days a week. And um, not sure what days yet, but I will post a schedule as soon as I get one. So yeah, thanks for stopping by. So as soon as this dries right here, then I can go back in and add um, a little bit more, and then it'll. Um, you know, just give it more dimension and stuff because it's really, I like how it is. It's really bled into each other. But once I add like um, more like red, it's going to, I don't know. It'll just give it another layer. It'll feel like more, I don't even know how to explain it. Kind of like, like this. If that was on top, it would show up real nice and stuff like this. So it'll just give it a little bit more. So that's probably all I can do on this one right now. So we're actually gonna switch over to some digital art. Well, this got messy. So yeah, I'm actually working, um, I know I just started, but I'm working on my emotes right now. Um, for if and when I can get affiliate so we'll see so anyway so right now we are gonna paint we're gonna switch over I'm gonna let that dry probably go back to that oh you know what I need my pen I need to clean this screen too hang on I'll be right back
All right, sorry. Really got to clean off the screen here. It's gross. Okay, hopefully this pen is charged. Actually, I'm just going to plug it in right now, just in case. So that was, yeah, 0%. Perfect. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Stop it. Rigidity. I don't want to try that. I've already used it. Really? Oh my gosh. I don't want to do that. Seriously? Okay, so. Um, so the program that I use for my digital art is just Art Studio Pro. I know a lot of people are um, like super big on Procreate and stuff. Um, I just never used it. I just use Art Studio Pro. So um, usually this charges pretty quick, but um, let's see. Where are you? Art Studio. So this is one of my um, digital paintings. Let me see if I can look. of a monkey or a gorilla I should say uh, so anyway so let's see so this is gonna be one of um, it's not showing really good on the camera because it has like a glare but this is gonna be one of the emotes that I'm gonna that I'm doing and then I'm gonna paint let's see file new Let's do let's do inches and let's do like just a like twenty by sixteen. Three hundred. <clears throat> All right, so there we go. So we have that. So then we're going to go layer, add layer from photos, and then I'm going to do this cute little guy. I don't even know what these things are called. That's good. actually haven't done digital art in like a really long time um because I've been busy with like commissions and stuff so actually this year I think I only did like one um one digital art piece and like I played around a little bit I was trying to do inktober and that didn't happen I think I did like six days um, but that was just like little stuff, nothing, nothing crazy. So I really only did like one where I spent time on to draw. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to do this guy and probably make him into an emote, I think. So mm, go layers. <clears throat> So hopefully this thing charge, or charges really quick. Usually it does. I'm going to go grab something. I'll be back. So how are you guys doing? How's everybody? I 
could get a blow dryer, but I'll just let this go by itself. But yeah, it's definitely going to need some more red around here. And once the whiskers go in, that's really gonna, that's really going to make it. So yeah, sorry, I should have been prepared with my thing being charged. They actually like updated this and since yeah since I haven't used it in a long time it's like it's so different I don't even know how to use it <laughs> let's see so if I want to do that and choose a pencil what happened to the sidebar so different. There we go. We're going to want black. All right, let me just see if this will work a little bit because usually it uh, doesn't take that long. Okay. Ah! So one thing that I always do is I always select the wrong layer. It's pretty funny. It's giving me like orange. Oh well, I'll take it. So this is just how I do my digital paintings. I know everybody does them different and stuff, but um, I just like to get a really rough um, sketch of it first and then I can go in. And I recommend um, having your reference photo like printed out and next to you because that's way easier. However, when I first started um, like drawing digitally, I didn't do that just because like I'm really lazy. You guys, I'm like so lazy. And, um, and so I just like flip back and forth on, on here for the picture and... Uh, I don't, um, I mean, it's, it's hard. It works out, but it's just, it's kind of annoying to have to flip back and forth, but that's all I do now because that's just how I'm used to doing it. So I'm just going to get a really rough sketch of this. And I don't do anything fancy, like I don't really work with layers or anything. This is the only layer that I do, and I just um, do it like I do traditional art. Like I use the airbrush the entire time, and um, I just build up my layers from there. So I don't do any fancy stuff like I see a lot of artists do, like I'm not that proficient in it.
So that's good enough. I just do it really simple. So I'm going to turn the opacity all the way up and then I just switch back and forth. So um, I'll just go like this and like look at it. So we'll start with the background here. And so like I said, I just use the airbrush tool the entire time. Mm, let's see. Airbrush. And just choose any color. I just gonna I just want to get my um my base layers down so it doesn't really matter. Um ah, see I do that every time. Select the wrong one. Why isn't it changing the color? It's so different than it was before. Okay, let's so let's see. So I just need a regular airbrush. Oh, here we go. Airbrush, soft airbrush. That's good. This color. All right, there we go. So just to start, that'll be fine. So I just want to get color like all over and then I start building up the layers. And you always want to start with your um, background first and then work forward. All right, so now we'll get like a darker green. And then I often just go back just to see. Um, also, something that I do sometimes is sample color, so if I can't really find the color, I'll just color pick it like that. And, um, yeah. and that helps a lot. back to airbrush. I don't know why it switched. And I feel like the camera is making it like really dark. It's not it's not that dark. So it just has like a really um, out of focus background. So I'm basically just going to pick different, um, some different colors of green and, um, you know, just to add in, just make, give it some variation. Kind of like a bokeh effect. Let's do like a lighter color. Actually, let me check. Bring down my flow. This is actually like really easy to do with in digital to get these kind of backgrounds because you don't have to take too much care. You can kind of just be messy with it and um, you know, it doesn't really matter. So, 
I think that's good for now. I like that. So now um, I always like to start with the eyes after the background just because, I don't know, that's my favorite part. And I just like to start like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, start with like with black and um, we're going to, let's see take down the size and I'm just gonna get in the dark around the eyes first and then we'll start building up from there. And I'll just keep going back to kind of see how big these irises are here. And then I'll bring this down a little bit more. And I seriously, this is all I use, you guys. I just use um, the airbrush the entire time, and I just um, change the size of the brush and change the opacity, and that's it. I don't do anything fancy, and I just build up my colors, build up my my layers, my um, you know my values, it just as I would with traditional painting. And it's not exact, like I said, because I don't have my reference photo um, right in front of me. I have to keep like kind of going back and forth. So it does make it like harder. But, um, but it's close enough. And it doesn't have to be exact either. It just has to be close. That's all I'm going for. Do you, does anybody know what this thing is called? I don't even know what this animal is. I mean, I think it's from Madagascar because it like has those big eyes or whatever, but I can't remember what it's called. Okay, so since I have this black, I'm just going to go ahead and um, probably just do the black on the whole piece. Since I have it, and colors will be, um, you know, be on top of this and glazing on top, so I'm not worried about using like straight black or anything. This is kind of how I do it in my traditional paintings too. Um, I just um, I'll use black, but then it's like colors get glazed on top and stuff, so it's not really straight black. And the cool thing that I like about, you know, doing art like this with your iPad is that it's like that um, pressure sensitive, I don't know what it's called. So like if you press harder, you're going to get um, more color coming out and stuff like as if you're really painting. So for me, this is like it's so much like traditional painting that um, I don't know, I'm just that's how I that's how I view it. So it's just the same for me. And this part, since we're just getting the color down, like nothing has to be perfect. Like I just want to cover up this whole thing, basically get color down. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like the colors don't have to be exact or anything like that. I just want um, color. I just don't want any white showing. <clears throat> He's got a little bit of undertone here, so I'll just do that. His ears are black, a little bit behind. So I'm basically just getting my darks in now. I'll kind of do like darks and then I might go with lights, like a few lights, like highlights and stuff, like just a few, just to get those mapped in. And then um, 
and then I just kind of work, you know, I work back and forth, like light and dark, light and dark, till it kind of looks how I want. And it's just a layering process, that's all it is. Okay. Then we have his little hands here. Ah! Whoa. Okay, so that's it for that. So I'm just gonna go really quick in this tree with this. Actually, let me do like a, more of like a brown, I think. Like a dark brown. Just to get a quick base layer on this tree here. And I'm not gonna go too heavy because I, I still wanna see my lines um, underneath. So, just to get that down. Okay, and I, and also I like this because you can like zoom in and whatever. So let's start working on the eyes, I think. So if I wanted to, I can pick my color picker and just get this kind of um, base eye color there. I always do that oh my gosh because I still select the color picker I need to go back to like the paint why does that change that's so annoying I don't know why it's doing that okay so let's turn that off there we go. And sometimes when you use the color picker tool, you can't really get the color that you're looking for. Like that happens sometimes where like what your eye sees, it's like brighter, but the color picker for some reason is not picking that up. So I don't always rely on that. I mean, sometimes it's just easier to grab, you know, a color like that. But um, most times I'll just pick myself. So that's kind of like the base layer there. So just do that with the other eye. And I love digital painting too because it's just so fast. Like I just feel like it's really fast and then you can like take it anywhere with you really. Like my um, kids, their, their um, sports and stuff when we were doing them before the you know, pandemic happened. Like my daughter, sometimes she would be at dance for, you know, four hours. So I would be sitting there and, um, you know, I could just bring this with me and then I feel like I'm getting work done and I'm being productive and doing something because that's a long time to just sit there and do nothing. So I used to get like ton of digital art done when my kids were in sports and stuff. Um, not so much anymore because um, I just been doing more of my traditional um, acrylics and stuff so I haven't really had that much time for digital art so I definitely this year want to make more time um, so yeah so that's kind of like in the orangey so now we're gonna kind of go with some like yellow in here and I'm just gonna reduce my brush 
And we're just gonna start to get a little bit of hint of that um, yellow. And now I'm just um, kind of using my brush strokes the same way that the um, texture in the eye is going. So you wanna make sure that when you're doing animals and when you're trying for realism that you want to um, you know, make sure that the fur is going in the right direction and, um, or whatever that you're doing, you know, just make sure that it's in the right direction. That's going to give you that realism. And once we add those highlights in there, that is just what's going to make it. So see, I'm just slowly building up this texture, but it's it's still fast at the same time. So, and I'm just gonna pick a bunch of just random colors. I know you can't really see it on my screen, can you? I don't know. The color pickers thing is up here. So I just pick um, just some you know, random colors in there uh, just to get the, like the more colors that you're going to have in there, the more realistic that it's going to be. And I, I get a lot of um, artists asking me like, you know, or I don't know, like what, what colors are you using and stuff? And it really doesn't matter because, you know, I could sit here and color pick this eye like apart, but it's not going to matter. You know what I mean? It's just, it's gonna be close enough, and that's all that matters. So probably today I'll just be able to get done this eye, I think, or these eyes maybe. And if that um, watercolor is dry, then maybe we can kind of finish that and then that will be it for today. I think I'm gonna put like a little bit of like green in there and I like digital too because it's like so easy to like glaze color over like you just barely have to push on it and you just glaze the color and that really helps add to the realism too All right, so since I have some of those lights in there, now I'm gonna get some of the darks. So for this one, I think I will color pick. It's like a really dark brown. And as I increase on the detail, my brush gets smaller. Um, I may increase my opacity, the flow. Um, it just depends. I'll like push a little bit harder, uh, you know, just to get that detail.
This is also not a good way of doing this, how I'm like switching back and forth, because you really should be looking at your reference photo more than you're looking at your artwork. That's why mine will not be like exactly the same at all. See his eyes, I think it needs to be bigger. Um, you know, so I, yeah, I definitely don't recommend doing, doing what I'm doing because a little bit better because he has these really huge eyes so I want to make sure that I get that because that's that's his whole look there Hope you guys can see that good on camera. Okay, so he really has some, you know, texture in his eye. Let me see if I could kind of get that on the base here. You kind of just draw those little like lines that he has and I don't know if you guys could see that. Just getting that texture here. So that's really starting to make it look more realistic, more like an eye by just adding in those like, I don't know, I don't want to call them veins, but the, that weird, you know, texture in the eye. And this is essentially what I do. I just go light and dark, light and dark, light and dark, because I'll add in you know, these are kind of the darks and then I'll go back in with the, with the lights. Hang on just a second. Okay, so. So I'm just gonna add in a little bit more green, just give it a little pop of color. It's very subtle in the eye, but you see that variation in color, especially right down here um, on the base. So I'm just gonna do it just a little bit in spots. So when we back out, we can, well, I don't know if you guys can see it very good, but it looks okay. So now I'm kind of going to just um, define the around the eye more and kind of go um, darker with the black because that's going to help make it pop too. I 
I think it's kind of hard for you guys to really see because it's showing up so dark on here. But I'm almost done with this part and I want to pop on the um, highlight because that is like what really makes it. Like when you put that highlight on there, it's like amazing. Okay, so I'm going to darken up this. Kind of fade that out there. Yeah, I don't know how well you can see that. Um, so let me see. But yeah, when you start adding those highlights is what really makes it come to life. Okay, so let's see. So we're going to take a pretty light color here, white-ish, and just start popping in that highlight. And I want to keep it, I'm going to bring my flow up because I want it to be, um, you know, pretty noticeable and stuff. So let's see here. And this I want to pay pretty good attention to. So I'll be going back and forth a lot because this is kind of like he's in the trees and stuff. So you can kind of see how that highlight is dappled. Um, so that's kind of what I want to create there. So I might need to go down just a little bit. Let me see. <laughs> I'm going to go back and forth a few times. And essentially I'm just kind of scribbling really. And like I said, it doesn't have to be exact. It's just I want it close. There's also a slight curve to it, and that's going to help um, make the eye look round. you could see what that's doing already it's just really like coming to life it's amazing this is like my favorite part the eyes are my favorite part anyway but once you um, pop in that highlight like that it's just like wow it's awesome so it's not exact but it's close but just look at I think it's like, I don't know. I hope you can see that really good. It looks better in person. And then I'm going to go back into in here and just in um like in the iris there and just add some brighter color too just to make that stand out more, but that's actually a really good start. So now we'll just move on to the other eye. And I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cre um, just do the same steps. So we will go with, hmm, probably like brown. And this eye is a little bit brighter because the light is coming from that side. So I have to keep that in mind that it's not going to be as dark.
I'll go ahead and put in the dark, the darks right now, just to help define that eye. Fill in this. And digital art can be scary. Um, especially if you're working like me where, where people aren't working with layers because I know when people do digital art, they um, they work a lot with the layers so that like if they mess up or they rework it a lot. Um, but I'm just so used to painting traditionally with acrylics and stuff that this is just how I work. Um, so it doesn't scare me. There is an undo button. So if you really do something, I don't know that like you, you know, you could use the undo button, but I don't even really use that a lot because you can just keep going over it like traditional paint like with my, with my acrylics if i mess up i could just paint over it you know let it dry paint over it and it's covered up completely um so that's kind of how this works really like i don't have to use that undo button or anything because if i mess it up i could just go over it and it's gonna it'll cover it so yeah i mean i really do this like traditional painting Okay, so we're going to get some of that bright kind of goldy color in there because there's a lot more of that in this side of the eye and just create some of that. I might have to take a potty break pretty soon because I feel it. Too much coffee. And I'm pretty messy when I paint too, I feel. I'm like, not, I don't take like too much care to like, I don't know, kind of, like in a, in a sense I do, but I'm kind of like just throw it, throw the color there and here, there and everywhere. It's like, I don't know. It just, it doesn't have to be perfect is what I'm saying. So now we're going to draw in those kind of detailed areas of the eye here. Let's add in this little highlight next to, or right on the bottom of the eye. And there's some in here. It's very subtle, but it's there and it makes a difference. All right, so let me see. Let's zoom out and let's see his eye. Okay, it needs to be needs to be bigger, right? Yeah, it's kind of not even the right shape. So let's try to get this like goldy color back. And I'm just going to kind of go up here cuz I just want to make sure that he really has those big big eyes. I'm going to bring my flow down. And see, like, that was all black there, but you can totally go over it because you can bring your opacity all the way up and it's just going to cover it completely. So you don't really have to worry about making mistakes. Now I went a little too far, so I'm just going to go back and forth and... 
to light until it's fixed. That's probably better size there. So now I just need to blend that in. So I'm gonna choose a brown and just kind of blend the eye like where the black and the top of the eye is just to give it like a little shadow there. All right, so for now, I think I like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop in the highlight and then I think I'm gonna take a bathroom break. Um, so let's do the highlight there. And I'll still, like I said, kind of go in um, the eyes a little bit after. Um, oops, too big, too big. Uh, after this is in and after the rest of him is in, then I kind of uh, reevaluate. I'll look, you know, make sure that the values are good and stuff. And I might bring in some other colors that are in his fur. It just depends. Um, but this is a really good base you know, layer and start for for the eye. And it's probably almost done. I mean, I won't tweak it like a whole lot, but um, yeah, I, I mean, I might go back into it. So nothing's ever like finished until I get everything on there and then I can um, make decisions from there of what I want to change or add or you know, adjust as far as values and color and stuff, which, yeah, I probably will add ma mainly just the values. I don't think like color too much, but I just need to make sure that my lights are light enough and my darks are dark enough. So, yeah, so I'll definitely need to add like the greens on this eye now because um, I didn't do any of that. So that definitely needs the green. Go ahead and like just glaze a little bit around the edges of that color because that's just going to add to the dimension as well. And just a little bit, it's really subtle, but it makes a difference, so. So I think he's coming along. I feel like that eye is still you know, funky there. This part needs to be cut off, but once I add the fur and stuff, I'll be able to uh, make those adjustments. And like I said, it's, uh, you know, it won't be exact, but it'll be close. Like if you just looked at this right now, you probably would be like, oh yeah, that's that's good, that's fine, you know. But when you put it next to it, it's it's a little bit off. So yeah, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a bathroom break right now um i don't have my screen i mean my um everything set up yet on here because this is only my second stream so i need i have to do a lot of um things i have to make my like be right back screen so i'm just gonna write on a paper <laughs> real fancy let me see i'm gonna get like a pen or something or a marker actually So yeah, so I'm just gonna leave this here. I will be back. I have to take a potty break from all of this coffee. Um, so yeah, give me maybe like um, like 10 minutes and I'll be back.
Okay, I'm back. All right, so I think we're gonna switch back to this since this is um, it's dry enough for me. So I'm just going, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna add in just a little bit more red, I think. It's, it's almost done. I'm gonna test these other red colors here too. It's kind of pink. Okay, those are more on the pink side, so I don't want that. Okay, that's like a dark orange, and this this is probably the best red, which is the red that I was using. So yeah, so let's see. This, I kind of just want to create some more, um, splatters, I guess. Oh! Yeah, that looks better. Just needed something, it was too flat. So once that dries, I think it'll be good. I think I'm happy with it. I might go in and tweak just a couple more things because like, that's just what I do. I get like fussy about it. Like this part right here is still weird to me. Oh, you know what though? We can add the um, whiskers in and stuff. Cause I think that's dry enough, so. My favorite part. So I'm just gonna take the gouache and actually a this like long liner brush and we will add in the um, the whiskers here. So let me go back to my reference photo and then I can we can add in that and then that one will be complete. So this is always my favorite part anyway on any um, of my wildlife pieces is just adding in the whiskers. That just adds so much already. You can really see that very good. Let's see. It's probably better if I put it down here because I can't hold it like that. Not steady anyway. Yeah, this is just gonna make it be like feel complete. I 
little pupper is here. What you doing? Hmm? You doing your little tap dance? She needs her nails cut so that when she walks on the floor, it's like little, little tap dancing. Okay, I'm just gonna turn this because it's gonna be easier for me to do it this way some of these okay. then he has a couple long like wonky ones that go up and up And that just adds so much to to that. Actually, some of these are like really far up here. Let's see. And then I'm just gonna add in some white back up here since that got covered up. Next time I'm gonna use some masking fluid. I had some, but um. I didn't use it. I actually just got it. I've never used it before because I am so new to um, watercolors. So I got some, but then I totally forgot and I didn't use it. So I wish I would have, um, but that's okay. That's kind of what gouache is for. Kind of brings in some of those. And if you mess up or say I did, you know, I don't know like go over something then I can um, put this and then you can still paint over it and so yeah, it actually makes it really nice. I'm just gonna add in like a few of the like really bright highlights and then this is pretty much done for this one. I'll go ahead and go down on the chin a little bit more too, make that a little bit better. Just need to water it down. That's better. See, it just needed to dry and now it is good as new. And that little hairs are really showing up a lot better. So yeah, I think that's good. I think he's complete. What do you think? I wasn't sure how it was going to be with like the red and stuff. Red, yellow, and orange. I wanted it to be kind of like that, like look fiery and stuff. Um, so I think it's pretty good. 
I could maybe probably work on his teeth a little bit more. I kind of got lazy down there, make it like a little bit, um, I don't know, just add some darks in there just to bring that out a little bit more. But other than that, I think it's pretty much done. I'm happy with how it came out. So yeah, I think I like it. I'm just gonna wait for it to dry and then I can sign it. But I'm happy with it. So that just needs to dry and then we are back on to this. Actually, let me move this because it is wet a little bit. Continue to work on this guy. All right, so I'm gonna leave his eyes for now, because um, like I said, I can make some adjustments at the end. So I'm just gonna kind of like work my way out from there, I think. So, um, I'll, well, actually, let me start up here. Let's start on this side. So he kind of has this orangey fur. So first, I'm gonna get in my base layers. So we're just gonna pick a random orange color. Doesn't matter, um, you know, doesn't matter. I just wanna fill in this color. Cause we're just gonna kinda go on top of this anyway with lights and darks. So we just need to fill in the color there. Mm. That's not near as bright, you know, right there. There's a, a big shadow, but like I said, I'm just trying to, um, I'm just trying to get color down so it doesn't have to be exact. I'm just gonna make this like a more muted orange. And I don't have to be like super careful with it because we're going to layer it up. So it's fine. And now he really has some like undertones here too. So this, even though there's white fur, I'm going to go pretty dark under here at first. Um, and then when I add the white on top, it's really going to show up. So, um, like right here, it's kind of like a purpley color around this eye. And then he, he has some of the orange and stuff over around here and grays and stuff. So, um, I think for now, I'm just going to pick like a grayish color. And like I said, I'm going to go pretty dark because, um, because it's, 
better to go dark like that and then the white will show up. If I go too white, the then it's it's not going to show up on anything. You won't get those real um, crisp hairs. I mean, I could do that and then I can go in between with the dark, but it's just easier to do it this way. I'm going to go ahead and do the gray right here just to get that transition because that will be uh, pretty dark right there. And I'm just going to go over this just a little bit to tone it down because that's not, um, it's not really as bright right there of an orange. And I'll go ahead and go over this too just so that I get rid of the white. I just don't want to have any white like canvas showing or paper, whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going to go even darker right here because this is pretty much just a big shadow. So I'm not going to go as dark as I am going to end up with, but it's a start. And then I have some orange here, um, probably like more of that muted orange. I'll just do this color. So yeah, so it doesn't really matter the color. I'm just trying to get a general idea so far of what colors are there. All right, so now I have the base. That's a really nice base. And then, like I said, I'm just gonna start, I guess, in one color. I mean, one side, so maybe like over here. Okay, so now I can pick like a white color And that might be too big, but we'll see. So anyway, we're just gonna try. So I'm gonna bring this down. Uh, let's see. Okay, so right here we have kind of, and this can get pretty tedious sometimes um, when you're doing fur and stuff. I mean, I do want those um, you know, pencil strokes or brush strokes, whatever you want to call them. But I'm not doing every individual, you know, fur there. And since this is like off to the corner, it's, it's a little bit out of focus. So I don't need to do every single hair, but I just need to, um, you know, just get the general um, direction of the fur there. Just creating some texture, but like right here, it's pretty soft. So I'm just gonna, um, you know, I'm not doing every hair. <clears throat> and you see, that just adds so much already. This is actually gonna be pretty quick and easy right here because there isn't that much detail. It's kind of just, yeah, fading into the background. So I can use a bigger brush on like, especially this whole part right here. It's just kind of, um, it's like going into the background. So you're just getting that hint. Then I'll bring it down just a little bit just to get A little bit of detail but not a lot And if too much of this gets covered up, then I can go back in with some darks and just darken up a little bit of it. 
which I probably will because I went with gray and it's um, there's some dark spots there so And then I'm just changing my brush size. It's kind of, you know, like if I were to paint, I would change um, my brush size. I, I always start out with like a bigger brush. So it's kind of the same with this. I start out with a, um, you know, with a bigger airbrush and then um, I get smaller and smaller as the details, um, you know, increase. And as my layers build up, I'm gonna get smaller um, to just, just so you could like see those details. So it's not quite the shape. It's kind of funny, but I could fix it later, you know, but I think that's a good base layer there. And like I said, I'll go in with darks later, but that's a good start. So We'll just move on and what I'm gonna do here, so this right here has a, a brown undertone. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna do the browns. So some of that orange is still showing through. I'm just, um, you know, because I'm not trying to push like really hard. I still want to get some of that orange. But like I said, when you first go down, you kind of want your layers to be dark so that when you when you go on top with the light color, so, you know, this, this does have some orange fur and stuff. So I want to make sure that it's dark enough um, so that the light layers uh, really show up. And it's the same with the traditional painting. My coffee's like cold now. So since we have that color, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this side too. And we'll kind of just work on the top of his head then and then, and then uh, we'll kind of just do this whole part of his head right here and then I'll work my way down. And when you're like traditionally painting, so say with like acrylics or something, um, like I always tell people, you know, don't worry about what colors you're putting down at first, just cover up your canvas, it doesn't matter. Um, and, and just every layer that you do is just gonna kind of um, help you with, if you're working in realism, it's just gonna give you that dimension and depth in your piece. So all of those layers kind of refract through like the colors, you know, and, um, and you'll see them just a little bit and it just helps. All right. So that's a good base layer there. Let me just do this. Let's see. And then I'm gonna start with the details on top. Which on this side is, you know, pretty orange. So let's start with that and we'll see. See this right here might still be a little bit too light. So we're gonna go way down and I'm still just using the airbrush the entire time. I'm not even um, changing that. But let me see, because these aren't long. So when you're, hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna do it a little bit bigger because it doesn't need to be still kind of out of focus right here. 
So when doing realism, you, as I mentioned before, you want to make sure that your the um, your brush strokes or your pencil strokes are going in the right direction. Well, you also want to make sure that they're the the right length because that is gonna um, you know help with your realism. Like if if you have like um, a short area, say like on a dog or something, and the fur is really short on the nose, and if you do it long, it's just gonna look weird. It's not gonna look right. It's not gonna look. You know, it might look cartoonish or something. So I'm just going to slowly build up this texture. And I'm not doing every single brush, brush stroke here, but I'm just trying to create some of that texture. So every time I go back, I'm kind of looking to see which way the fur changes because right here it's going in this direction, but up here it's starting to change like this way. So I just want to make sure that I am doing that. So this is a pretty light color, but it's also still um, kind of a thick layer. It's kind of thick. so. Um, I'll go on top even with a lighter like kind of orangey yellow and just to get that more like detail for texture so this is kind of like the like the second or third layer here just getting down um, more color but like I said as I build up then my brush gets smaller and smaller for those details and yeah just for more realism too you just got to make sure um, that you pay attention to uh, where the fur is soft and stuff because like this, you know, the way that the photograph was taken where the picture, how the picture is and, you know, this part is not as in focus as this part and stuff. And so by paying close attention like that to your reference photo, that's going to help with realism too. And since I'm getting more into the details here, I'm looking uh, back at my reference photo like a lot more than I was before because I really want to make sure that I am getting it accurate. So I'm just starting to build up the texture here. So I'm just creating some, you know, fur strokes, but it's thicker right now. And I'm not trying to cover up that whole dark area because I still want it to show through. So that's getting there, maybe. So how's it looking so far? All right, so now I'm gonna pull in some of that yellow, some of this like goldish tone. It's still not like the super bright highlight, um, but I wanna start working that in there just to see. And I'm not gonna right now put this like everywhere. I just want to, um, you know, just like sporadically, sparingly use it, but um, I mean, while also keeping an eye on my reference to see where it where it goes. 
but you don't want every layer to be exactly the same you don't want to repeat that same you know like I just did with this layer it's going to be different because you want to see the layer underneath a little bit so this is just slowly building up you scared me oh my god my husband he's crazy he's outside and he's like in the window waving at me I'm like seriously he just scared the crap out of me oh my god anyway so <laughs> so the the you don't want every layer to be the same and this is so subtle I, I mean I'm sure you can see it a little bit now but it's just really subtle in the next couple layers when I um, get a little bit brighter with it that's when I'm gonna start doing like that little that like wiry hair you can kind of see I don't know it's more um, like defined and stuff so right now I'm just trying to build up slowly build up those little um, fur areas And obviously I'm working dark to light. I find that's easier to work in. I used to work, um, I used to work light to dark uh, when I first started doing art. And then when I, when I started to do, use pan pastels and do my pastel pieces, um, I found it easier to do dark to light. And, um, and then I just kind of, got into that habit of painting like that and so now I do my acrylic paintings like that and this and I just think it's so much easier like I'm kind of like I don't know why I didn't do that before like just you know I don't know So this is really starting to kind of take shape here. It's looking more like fur. All right, so let's see. So back here he has um, kind of this lighter area. So let me go try to put some of that in there. And it's in the background, it's kind of, you know, blurry back there so we're just gonna kind of create that ah! how did the color picker get on there oh my god okay to keep it kind of big over here and I'm not pushing too hard because I kind of just want to like ooh, glaze the color I want it to have kind of like a fade I think I might need to lighten that up make it more like not as bright but I do like this color so I'm gonna start putting um, some of those fur details so we're gonna go really um, let's see yeah so this is the tedious part but seriously it um, it really adds so I'm just gonna kind of go in and do um, some of this like fur 
and it's not um, it's kind of sporadic this fur here it's kind of you know so every brush stroke is not going to be the same I'm going to do some of them kind of straight but some of them are like curly going this way or that way um, so this is definitely like super tedious but it's worth it and it just adds to the realism and like I said I'm not um, doing every single stroke that it shows in the photo but I just need it to go for close you know and I'm gonna just go back and just uh, make sure that that I am going in the right direction so like like these down here were kind of sporadic and now you can see some going here and stuff so I just need to pay attention to that Yeah. And I'll even go back into this and just, you know, go a little bit darker, add some darker highlights. So this is just kind of like the base. And then at the end, like I said, when I, um, when I have everything in, like mostly in there, then I'll kind of go back and reevaluate my values and just, uh, make sure that everything is, is exactly how I want it. But, um, this is really, um, I don't know, like a lot of digital artists, this might be like slow for some digital artists, but for me, I feel like it's fast um, compared to other mediums. Like obviously my, um, my acrylics are the slowest medium that I do. Sometimes they take me months, it just depends. But, um, you know, but this and like my Pam Pastels and stuff are, this is like super quick to me. I, I am doing a lot of detail on this, but like normally I can get, you know, one digital painting done in like a day or two. So to me, that's like super fast because like I said, some of my other ones take me like months if I'm doing acrylic. But now it's really starting to take shape. It's really starting to get that dimension and that fur texture there. are a little bit like crazier here so I'm just gonna like randomly do some little like curlies and just make sure that they're not all the same you don't want to just do the same brush stroke throughout the whole thing because that will not look real So I was planning on doing a two hour stream today. So we're about at that time. I'm gonna work a little bit more. But, and then I will probably pick this back up. I'm thinking the next stream that I will do is gonna be on um, Tuesday. I still haven't figured out my schedule because obviously I just started streaming so I'm not sure what's going to work for me. Um, but yeah, so I'll have to figure that out. But as soon as I do, I will definitely post it. I 
And this is how I'm gonna carry on for this whole uh, side of this. And I know a lot of people like have, you know, kind of mixed feelings about digital art. Um, at least in the fine art world um, that I'm trying to be in, but um, I just love digital art, like honestly. And I've had people tell me that they can't tell, like on some of my mediums that I do, like with pastels and acrylic and digital, that sometimes they can't tell like which is which. I feel like I can tell what my digital ones are, but, um, yeah to some people it's harder <sighs> so yeah so I think I'm gonna have to be done for today but I feel very accomplished. I feel like we did a lot because I finished the watercolor and um, and then we started this. So this is probably what I'll continue on on Tuesday if, um, if I do come back on Tuesday. I'm not positive. Um, but yeah. I appreciate everybody hanging out. And yeah, it was really fun. All right, so I'm so new to this, I'm still learning. So let me see if we can um, like go somewhere where, let's see. I don't know. I still need to learn how to use this thing. I think I got out of that other page that I was supposed to be at. Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, so thanks guys. Thanks for hanging out. And like I said, we'll um, finish this one up hopefully Tuesday, but I'm not sure. So if you want, please follow me on, um, well, obviously on here and follow me on, um, Instagram, Facebook, anything that you can. Those are the two main ones that I use. So yeah, follow me over there and I'll post, um, on there the next time that I'm going to go live. Um, I do have a discord, but I'm still trying to learn how to use that. Like it's so confusing to me. I don't know. I'm just weird. But anyway, so as soon as I figure out how to use that and then uh, <laughs> you guys can probably get information out of there too. So anyway, so thanks for hanging out. It was fun and I'll see you next time.